Hi, welcome to our YouTube channel. This is a brief features and overview of an AIM MXP. This is a new release for uh, 2018 um, from AIM Sport Line. It's a 6 inch TFT um, data logger dash um, and it has an 800 by 480 pixel uh, resolution with a 600 to 1 contrast ratio. Um, so you can see that here on the screen. It does have um, 1100 lumen brightness, so it's good in, uh, in broad daylight um, with the anti glare screen. Um, this one still has a screen protector on it here. It does have five configurable RGB LEDs, so you can vary the color like so. I'll just force them all to blink here, and you can obviously change um, the frequency at which they blink or just maintain a continuous uh, illumination, as well as 10 um, shift light LEDs, um, similar to the ones on the side just at the top here. Um, currently, I have um, connected to uh, the device um, just uh, R via RS3, uh, Race Studio 3 software, and it's um, displaying live data that's uh, four channel values um, via the OBD2 protocol, um, the generic one that's uh, CAN based. So the way that you can um, actually connect this to a vehicle is it comes supplied with this 37 pin harness here, and um, this allows you to have four analog inputs, um, as you can see here. There's a dedicated CAN uh, for the AIM communication, uh, for things like the GPS sensor, um, uh, smarty cams, uh, data hubs, and uh, LCU ones, and as well as um, uh, CAN input for um, various uh, aftermarket ECUs. There is a K-line um, input for um, certain ECUs as well, so that expands the connectivity as well. And then there's this waterproof connection here for uh, just a mini USB uh, port, and that allows you to connect uh, via USB to the computer. The device is also Wi-Fi enabled, so uh, in the event that it's not easy to access, um, you can obviously connect to it via uh, a similar to a Wi-Fi network. The device also can be equipped with a 22-pin auxiliary harness that's optional. It's a similar mil-spec connector here. They just thread onto the back. Um, this one will enable you to have four additional analog channels for eight in total. Um, you can expand that further um, with things like channel expansion and TC hubs, things like that, as well as an additional CAN input, um, which allows you to do more or gives you more freedom and flexibility to do more complex things um, with various uh, aftermarket ECUs, um, as well as an RS-232 connection for some legacy style uh, connectivity to ECUs. So what you're seeing here is, is a simple um, illumination of, let's say, a home screen that's showing a traditional analog tachometer with the RPM shown there, GPS speed here. This is a rolling time of the entire session since it started uh, logging, since it triggered an RPM input. The battery voltage uh, via the OBD connection, uh, we're seeing a simulated 50% fuel level here, and then uh, engine coolant temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. And that is triggering a conditional alarm that's showing here, this gray um, coolant, low coolant temp uh, um, icon here, as well as a low coolant temp um, illumination at the bottom uh, message to uh, trigger to the driver that the coolant is not sufficiently warm, as well as this blue warning light here. So similarly, if we force the coolant temperature to become warm, let's say 107 degrees Celsius, you can see now this turns red and um, the conditional alarm will trigger that to be yellow and the warning light goes yellow. Similarly, if we overheat um, here and, and the alarm shows high coolant temp as a message to the user, um, let's say 115, it'll say coolant temp warning at the bottom and we still have the icon with now the live measure being shown as red and then a high frequency uh, flash of the red warning light there to trigger the or to notify the, the driver that uh, the, there's an issue with the, the coolant temperature. Similarly, we can have analog inputs um, do a variety of things, uh, such as we can wire analog inputs to a traditional vehicle to trigger things like warning lights here for um, your hazards. Um, so trying to simulate kind of a traditional streetcar dash. Um, we can have high beams when they're illuminated trigger an icon. We can have things like um, left and right turn signals. I'll show you an example of that on the left side of the screen. Similarly, you can do the same thing on the right side of the screen. Um, if we look at the fuel level here, uh, we can force this value to be 
let's say 11 percent so that will show a low fuel warning here and that will trigger um so the icon is showing low fuel and then that will trigger this uh green uh, second led to synonymous with uh, fuel the green color and then if we go even lower on fuel let's say seven percent it will turn this icon red and now we have a green led that's flashing here so we can also um, force everything to blink once again so you can see all the different colors of the leds that uh, are allowable for these conditional alarms um, so i also have connected to the device via the four analog inputs on the standard uh, um, harness that comes with the device um, just some ir or infrared tire temperature sensors so you can see here four icons for four different corners, front left, front right, um, rear left, rear right, um, showing that all four of them have these blue uh, labels on each of the tires indicating that the tires are cold. So if we scroll to another screen to visualize the data slightly differently, we can see the live temperatures of those four here. So it's just showing the ambient temperature in the room. If I put my hand in front of them, it will go slightly higher to about 30. So in order to simulate what a tire temperature might be, I just have this uh, simple uh, Black & Decker um, uh, iron, uh, for like a laundry iron. So I'll put it in front of the sensors here and you will see them heat up. And if I go quite close, I can get a few of them to go quite hot. About 115, 110 is the surface temperature of the, um, of the iron here. So you can see 100 degrees is triggering an alarm that uh, the tires are overheated and anything below 60 is triggering um, an alarm that uh, the tires are cold. But a nice way to visualize this is on this screen here that we can see the tires go green when they heat up back to blue when I remove the heat. So green means they're in the optimum operating range and then I can force a few tires to overheat if I get quite close here. So I'm overheating those two and as I move it iron closer I can force all of them pretty much to overheat there and then I can remove it and they're all optimum and they go back to being cold. So this is a great way to visualize your tires coming up to temperature and uh, if the, the suspension tuning is correct you can visualize throughout a corner or even a lap um, which tires are overheating or which tires are having difficulty uh, maintaining heat or proper operating temperature. So if we scroll to the next screen this is um, a typical off-road style screen uh, where you have a very large rev counter say GPS speed rolling time here and then you can have some some more data items from the ECU like coolant temperature and fuel level two things that might be important in the off-road uh, world this is a traditional more traditional analog tachometer um, speedometer set up here with uh, two odometers here the device is brand new so there's no mileage on it currently and then you can visualize uh, similar um, coolant temperature, fuel level, battery voltage, and full warning or rolling time of the entire session. And you can see here that it's still showing all the warnings uh, regardless of how you're visualizing um, the screen here. This page does not have icons. It would be um, this page here that would have the icons. So when we go back and we click the view button here, um, this is another screen that you can allow to visualize nine data items here with a traditional bar style tachometer for a race car application, gear indicator, rolling time, and similar data items being visualized here with the four uh, tire temp sensors being shown there. So once again, if I say front or rear right, I can force that to go quite hot here and I remove the heat and it goes away, bring it back and I can force it to overheat there. So that's a great way to, a great way to visualize um, tire temperatures while actually uh, driving the vehicle. So when we click um, view again, it will bring us to this GPS check screen. The device um, is currently connected to five satellites and has good satellite reception and we're not registering any tracks currently that are nearby. So when we go to menu here, we'll click exit and then menu. So we'll remove the RPM input here so it stops triggering the session and we will click menu so we'll stop forcing all of the values here we'll click memory and it will have a test session logged 
So yesterday there's a few that have been logged. So we'll go to this one here and you can see the maximum RPM, the, the full session lap time because it never passed the lap beacon. We can click um, see the max speed in kilometers per hour. Similarly, we can click back for tests and scroll through other tests. This one, uh, lower time, same max speed, just from a simulated input. And you can scroll through and, and reveal all of the, the max speeds and lap times right on the device here after a session is completed. So we'll click exit here and then uh, we'll click menu and we can scroll through a bunch of the different items on the device. We can configure the date time. Um, we can configure the backlight brightness here. So that'll show you if it will automatically adapt the brightness for daytime, nighttime. Um, this is a new feature on the 1.2 level devices as well as the MXP. Um, there is a video input on the back of the device where we'll click enter here. And it will not have a video um, showing, it'll just show this bar screen here just because we don't have an input. However, you can use this for a rear facing camera or a front facing camera in an off-road style application. So very convenient for track cars as well as street cars that would like to maintain um, a rear camera or add a rear camera if they didn't have it. Um, this is showing uh, a predictive reference for your, your best lap time of the day. Uh, this is great. It has a few different um, counters for odometers. So this is the total system mileage in time and then kilometers and then four user configurable and uh, renameable um, uh, trip meters. Um, so we can automatically perform a gear calculation on the device um, just by rowing through um, the gears at a for a specific period of time um, and stepping up through the gears. It will automatically learn the gear ratio um, for your wheel and tire size and your axle ratio given an RPM input and satellite reception. So if we need to reperform that because of something like uh, changing a tire size or changing a gearbox, changing a final drive ratio, we can uh, do that here. Um, we can also access all the GPS tracks that are on the device and we can enter the GPS track manager. And currently it's um, automatically gonna select the nearest um, race course when we approach one. We're not currently close enough to one to do so. And then we can configure the Wi-Fi on the device to be automatically enabled when you're below a certain speed, or we can make it um, fully off or fully on. We'll leave it on auto there. And then system info will show the device serial number, firmware version, boot version. This is the latest version as of April uh, 2019 here. And um, we'll go back to the home screen here and just summarize that this is a, was a feature and overview video of an AIM MXP. It's a, a great six inch um, form factor uh, dash display and data logger from AIM Sportline.